All right, so hello, my name is Scott Engler. I am a um, published author and thought leader on career transitioning and LinkedIn professional branding. So I want to do an actual video video of me talking about something I did a podcast on recently, which is uh, the third component when I've done uh, LinkedIn profile grading in the past and when I'm really you know talking to people about how to optimize their profile to find uh, land another job and attract recruiters and opportunities to them. There's three components. So today this video is for the third of those. Uh, if you didn't get a chance to watch the first two, if you go on my YouTube, uh, you could watch where I talk about the, the, the primary two, which is your profile optimization and your professional branding and presence on LinkedIn. So today I want to talk about what I call contactability. Now, I want to talk about what I've found most job seekers whose profiles I look at and work with, uh, the mistakes that they make, uh, and what successful job seekers who get contacted about a lot of opportunities via LinkedIn do differently. And I'm going to talk about that today as, as part of this. So the, the mistakes that I find that job seekers make and again, this is really specific to recruiters, and I'm gonna explain why, is they don't put uh, a preferred method of contact on their profile. They, a lot of them don't have anything. Some of them may have a website, not as much, because uh, a lot of times that's more of a, like a business owner type of thing, but um, they don't have their direct method of contact if they do, they may have their email address, but they don't put it in their profile summary box. And what I've found is the other mistake that 99% that of people don't do is they don't specify really who should be reaching out to them. So the first thing I wanna talk about is the method of contact. Now, as it pertains to recruiters, what I've found successful job seekers do, and I also have discussed this with recruiters as well, is they put their phone number on there. And I know a lot of people have the apprehension, well, I don't want random people calling me, this, that, and the other. The truth is the people that I found that have been successful with job searching have never complained to me about getting those random calls. Here's why that's important with a recruiter specifically. If you understand a day in the life of a recruiter, if you understand that they get about 200 applications within the first 200 seconds of a job post, if you took the time to think and consider that they're on very strict deadlines by the companies to find the right candidate and they have so many people to sift through, you would understand that calling someone um, from the number listed on their profile summary is actually going to take a lot less time than to copy and paste their email, to go back in their email account, to get on there, send an email account, try to set up an appointment. A lot of recruiters are just, what they're doing is they're just filtering through. They're calling, if you don't pick up, next, I'm on to the next one. That's really just the way it works. They, they literally have to do that in order to be successful at their job. So if you could understand the way this works and are open to trying something different is, is you know, like, like I say, if you wanna experience different results, do something differently. And so what I tell people is to put their, their contact information um, in their profile summary box, as well as on their contact information. Now here's, I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into LinkedIn and show you how to do this. So here we are on, on LinkedIn, right? And where most people's uh, contact information is, if you go, We'll go check out my profile. It is on this section over here to the right. So here's my stuff. I don't have my phone number because I'm not looking for, for a job. Like I said, this is something very specific uh, with recruiters. Now, if you, Mo many other people in hiring positions, you'd be surprised that people don't even know to do this, to where to find this on someone's profile. 
So that is one of a few reasons why I'm so um, adamant to people that they should put it in their summary box. And the reason why is not only the, that functionality component, but the fact that the summary is the number one thing that recruiters are going to look at on your profile. Now, you want to draw them in and get them interested in and then just make it, re just think about it, just make it really easy for them. So they're reading, they're like, oh, this guy or girl sounds impressive. You know, maybe they'd be a good fit for the type of company. And then you say, you know, here's where you could reach me and just put in your number right there. So have it on there, but also have it on here. And you'll find that you will get calls uh, more often that way from recruiters. So if that's something that you're looking to do, that's my recommendation. The second part, and we're going to stop looking at the screen, is the who should be contacting you. Now, this is something that 99% of job seekers really don't do. It's one thing to, um, you know, put in your contact information. It's another thing to let people know what types of opportunities you're looking for. Now, most job seekers I speak to about this think that it's obvious on their profile from reading it. Guess, guess what? The unfortunate truth is it's usually not. And one of the reasons is many people that I work with or talk to, they've all, they've had different types of positions before. Maybe their title or role was called something. And the truth of the matter is if you're looking for a new job that leaves that mystery, it's like, well, I don't know, even if this person's working as a financial advisor right now, if they're on career premium or if they're, you know, they're looking for a job and I'm a recruiter, I don't know if that's the next, that's what they're looking at. Uh, for the next position. I don't know if they're looking to stay in the same industry. So it's, it's really good to be clear about who should be contacting you. And um, even if it may, you may think your profile is so obvious, keep in mind the amount of information that everybody is seeing nowadays with just the digital age and the amount of information recruiters are looking at. So just spell it out. I mean, you really have nothing to lose about saying specifically who it is. And I used the example uh, the other day on the podcast was like, just think about like a, like an online dating profile. Let's say the girl said, you know, she just got out of a two year relationship and she's looking for something serious. Um, you know, any guys that are, that are interested, reach out to her to connect and whatnot, and maybe they'll go on a date. So that's good. It is. I mean, she'll, she'll probably get people reaching out to her, you know, depending on what else she put on her profile and everything else, but um, she's probably going to get a wide range of guys reaching out to her, right? So what, what I'm talking about here is if instead the, the lady said, I'm, you know, I just got out of a two year relationship and she's saying, I love music and I, and I, and I want, I like dating musicians. Let's just say this is, this is going to be an extreme example just to prove my point. I love guys that are um, around five foot 11 or taller and that are musicians uh, that, and let's just say she has a stipulation, you know, I'm, I'm not looking for a guy that already has kids. I'm, so I'm looking for a single guy that is a musician, singer, songwriter, creative type, and is a uh, brunette and over five feet 11. So if, you know, if that's you, please reach out to me. I'd love to talk to you more and go on a date. So she's being really clear. And again, that's an extreme example, but I'm just using that so you could understand the difference. Uh, so then you could apply that same principle on your LinkedIn profile. So spell it out. Even if she's talking about how she loves musicians and her summary and, you know, other parts of her profile and she likes tall, dark and handsome. At the end of the time, when it's time for that call to action, spell it out. If you are this type of position or company or, you know, da 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 you could reach me at, and then leave hopefully your phone number or email if that's, if you're absolutely set on having that being your preferred method of contact. So that's what I got today. Um, if you um, are interested in getting updated on my content on these types of areas, you could follow me, Scott Angler, E-N-G-L-E-R on LinkedIn. Uh, if you are seriously interested in my service, which is specializing in profile optimization, professional branding, and level one networking, that's my, that's the, the service that I'm really providing this month for my company, uh, reach out to me on LinkedIn with a private message or in mail, preferably saying serious inquiry, and we could discuss the next steps. Thanks so much. Best of luck to you guys.